this now. So it has a radius r, let's say, and r is related to l. Pi r is l. Because the length of the rod is pi r and it's l. So the radius is l over pi. I want the electric field here. Let me make it a let me make a bigger drawing. So we want the electric field at the center. So we have a total charge Q. So there's a charge density, lambda, linear charge density, which is just Q over L. That's a charge per unit length. So is the x-axis. Now, suppose I consider some at an angle theta here, some element, a tiny piece here of length dl. Then this is so tiny, it acts like a point. It produces an electric field, assuming it's positive charge, electric field which is radial this way. Then there's another one here, exactly symmetric, where also this is theta. They will produce an exactly equal, a field equal in magnitude. But now, the, you see the horizontal components cancel, because it's the same angle here. So those have the same magnitude the fields, and the horizontal components cancel. So only the vertical component survives, and it's vertically down. So in calculating the electric field, I don't need to worry about the horizontal components. I only add up the vertical components of every field. That is, I, I take every DL, and I just look at this vertical component. OK, so how much is this field? It's k e, 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, times dq, which is lambda dl, over r squared the radius, r squared. This is d. But I want to take, of course, the vertical component. The vertical component it means I must multiply by cosine the angle. But this angle, this is theta here. So this angle is 90 minus theta. Okay. So the vertical component, this one, is k lambda dl over r squared times cosine the angle, and the angle is 90 minus theta. But cosine 90 minus theta is just sine theta. So this is this field, and it's vertically down. So the, we know the direction. All of them will give us vertically down. All the electric field, all the dls will give vertically down, but this is the magnitude. So what is the total electric field? It's k lambda dl sine theta over r squared. And I have to integrate this over dl. But dl, see, this is theta. This is theta plus d theta. So this is d theta. This tiny angle here is d theta. So what is dl? It's r d theta. Well, of course, d theta is measured in radians. 
that the length of the arc is equal to the radius times the angle subtended at the center. The angle subtended at the center is d theta. So dl is just r d theta. So I replace dl by r d theta. It becomes k, ke, ke, lambda. And dl is r d theta. And then over r squared, so it becomes over r. And then we're left with d theta sine theta, or sine theta d theta. And theta varies to go through the whole rod, or semicircle. Theta begins at 0 and ends up at 180 degrees. So from 0 to pi, pi radians, which is 180 degrees. So this is just k e lambda over r. The integral of sine is minus cosine from 0 to pi equals k e lambda over r. Now minus cosine pi, cosine pi is minus 1, times minus, that's 1. Minus, minus, that's plus, cosine 0, 1, plus 1. So it's 2 ke, which is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. So 2 lambda over 4 pi epsilon 0 r. This is the electric field of uh, this semi-circle. Now you can replace lambda by Q over L, and L, of course, is pi R. So, so lambda is Q over pi R. So you can replace lambda by Q over pi R, and you end up with some expression that depends on Q now and R. Okay.